Survivor specialist John and McKenna are back to rewind this episode of Survivor 46. I'm excited because we have some good stuff coming your way, as you can tell by Gabe, Soda, and Michaela on the cover of uh, this week's episode. Yeah, this is it's an interesting week. Obviously, we're, we're talking about episode several, both the name of the episode and the show. <laughs> the fact that it's the seventh episode of the season. Yes. Uh, McKenna, how did you feel about this episode? Because this is something we've seen several times now. This, this, it's it's almost predictable at this point, I would say. Not Maybe. quite seven. <laughs> Not <laughs> quite seven. <laughs> yes, technically only six times in a row. Uh, yeah. Six times in a row. But... <laughs> This is, I, I have to double check my math there. Uh, this is something we're used to at this point. We expect this post merge kind of still of a, tribal of thing. Tribe. Yeah. yeah. How did you feel about it this time compared to instances in the past where it's happened? I feel like this time it was a little bit more dynamic where we had a little bit more like of relationships coming in to play here where it wasn't just like straight up this is who's going home we had a little bit of chaos and scramble and like multiple names thrown out so i thought it was it was a good episode but like again i'm tired of the format because all right mergatory breaking up into two tribes then we get a merge it's really interesting because I haven't really thought about this until literally right this moment. <laughs> and one of the things that happened throughout the history of Survivor is the merge expanded, right? If we get to a point where obviously in the first few seasons of the show, 10 people emerge. And then we expand that. Uh, when was the first expanded merge? Help me out here. What was the first expanded merge? What do you mean? Like right. the first merge with more than 10 people. Um, well, Cambodia was, like, the biggest merge. Yeah, Cambodia was the first time that they merged at 13. And, like, they've kind of stuck to 13. Kind of. But if we look at the last, like, technically The new era was, like, a lot of 13s. Or, like, 12, then Edge of Extinction brings you back up to 13. Right. So technically speaking, like 13 tends to be the moment where everyone ends up on the same beach, I think is the good way to look at it. Right. Mm -hmm. But if we look at it, it's like the mergatory vote, only half of the tribe is able to be voted for. It's kind of like, I mean, people complain about it a lot is the fact that it's kind of a tribe swap. And Mm -hmm. then because we, especially in the last couple of seasons, we've been doing the split right after that vote at final 12. It's again, kind of another tribe swap. We're really just merging at 10 again. When you come down and you think about it, in, in, yeah. like when we really get down to it, because we don't get a pure merge vote until right. final we're, 10, we're mm-hmm. just merging at 10 again, like we were all the way back at the beginning of the series. Yeah, it. I don't hate the, the 10, but like there is still, you know, that one person who sort of doesn't get to play the merge Mm -hmm. that makes the jury but is also merged because they get to meet everyone so it's kind of very like it's weird discombobulating (laughs) this the these the mergatory and this episode i think are some of our hardest like to compare things to because Mm -hmm. do we um relate it to a tribal phase section do we relate it to a merge point in the game like it's it's very hard to discern which way to go and so i feel like we have a good smattering of um merge and pre-merge uh examples for our our moments this week yeah i agree and i think a lot of it also comes down to the fact this is the seventh episode of the season uh, obviously mm-hmm. as referenced by the name and in other seasons the seventh episode of the season is prior to the merge mm-hmm and it's just, and it's not that these seasons are shorter than other seasons. It's not that the other seasons are longer or anything like that. Uh, but what it is, is we had so many seasons starting at 20 people for so long 
that seventh episode was still pre-merge because we weren't eliminating it. And I think when we look at it now and we see that we're starting with 18 castaways almost every every season is mm -hmm. starting with 18 castaways now. I think it's pretty safe to say that at this point. When you get to seven and it's post-merge, or at least it's in the jury phase of the game, it plays out quite similarly to other episode sevens in the past. Yeah, it really does. And so that's why we're watching an episode seven over on the Patreon. Um, we have Millennials versus Gen X coming your way. I will destroy you. So that's uh, episode seven of season 33. So become a patron. The link is right on the screen right here. So please become a patron. You get so much content, not just our rewind, but Cinema Specialist, Amazing Race, uh, Phil has got a lot of things, Every Season Matters, there's just there's a lot going on. There is. <laughs> there. Uh, so before before we start diving into this episode with our out, wait, out, play, and out last, uh, everyone make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Uh, we did we finally several hit- Several likes, several, several subscribes. Likes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we would appreciate that. We finally hit 10,500 subscribers, but uh, Phil wants us to keep driving that number up. So keep on doing it. We appreciate you all so much for tuning in. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get into this. McKenna, what's our outwit moment this time? All right, outwit. We are going breaking tribal lines and not just doing the obvious boot. So here we have Tim and Soda going home. Um, but we're mainly focusing on soda here where like you have the majority Nami and the main people on the fence here are soda and Venus. And Charlie is just like the obvious name that is being thrown out to kind of mirage the plans of either soda or Venus. Yeah. Here is, it, this is an interesting thing because again, this feels more like a pre merge moment than it does a merge moment here mm -hmm. because Essentially, this is the outcome we usually see in a swap. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, both of our examples are, are swap moments that uh, pertain like, to similar situations like this. It's so interesting because in these instances, it tends to be a tribe that was winning a lot, that didn't have an opportunity to vote anyone out. And now they're just like chomping at the bit and have this opportunity to thin themselves out because they're growing irritated with each other. And now... Granted, people are quite friendly this early in the game. When, mm -hmm. And it's one of these things that happens in the shorter game, I think, where people aren't quite tired of it. And it's kind of one of the refreshing things about Season 46 is seeing how... And, and it gets 45 to the extent, too. Right? Like, 45, we saw it with people growing tired of Bruce. Or at least we saw confessionals about people growing tired with Bruce. And in 46, we're seeing it a lot of that talk with about uh, Venus. And we're even seeing that talk about everyone else on NAMI as well, right? Hunter last week referenced um, Liz hates Soda, Soda hates Venus, and like everyone hates each other on the NAMI tribe. So when we get into it here, this is something we've seen over and over again in Survivor, but it feels refreshing because we've had so many seasons of people seemingly just really liking each other for a long yeah. time now. Yeah. So um, we chose two tribal phase uh, moments here, and I'll start off with mind first. So we have the uh, Gabe boot in Marquesas, where all of original row two turn on Gabe um, and save the Mata Amu in Boston Rob V and Sean um, because Gabe was just vibing. He was here for he was here for the the social experiment of it all and didn't really care about voting or wanting to vote. So he wasn't going to strategize and he was that wild card that they just wanted to eliminate uh, from the game and eliminate from question. Um, so we have that relation. I believe people were talking about Tim as like the the vibes guy pre preseason of like social experiment of it all. And then um, with Soda, he he was just that like person from a majority that they all decided to target and get mm -hmm. out of the game. It's it's really interesting. Like, really and I'm, I'm going to be a bit of a Gabe defender here. And you know what? If you want to hear more conversations about Gabe, uh, head on over to the Patreon. Listen to every season's matter because 
Phil, Will, and Blake have been going on about Marquesas this month, uh, and it's, it's definitely worth a listen to. But I, I recently watched Marquesas. Marquesas is actually one of the more re- the most recent season outside of Forty Six that I've watched of Survivor. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, I'm like part way through that rewatch still. But Gabe, this this target of Gabe here is very interesting because a lot of people kind of a credit to the fact that he like makes this comment about I'm here for the social experiment. I'm not here for the game of it all, and that is a comment that is made in that episode. I'm not going to defend him there. Mm-hmm. But at the beginning of the episode, he's talking about how he's making these human connections with Rob V and Sean. And mm-hmm. that's really what's driving him here. And he doesn't want to just pick them off because they have a majority. Yeah. that That's the real interesting thing about this game situation. And in fact, in this episode, this is the first episode where rocks is mentioned in Survivor history. Because obviously the, the rule of rocks changed. There's a conversation mm-hmm. between Gabe and John where they mention at a tie break, they go to rocks. And mm-hmm. that is ultimately what actually drives this flip on Gabe here. It was to avoid rocks. Yeah, because if Gabe somehow flips in with the old Mata Amus, then that's 4v4 and that's not good for the old Rotu members. Um, and it's you bring up the human connection of it all and that's actually the topic of the digging deeper mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure as well yeah. so like phil and blake discuss that human connection that you see kenzie and ben have and like gabe is also just trying to have that human connection with people but you know it doesn't bear fruit for mm-hmm. him as much as it did for ben yeah, and, and of course, like the interesting thing when we compare this moment in Marquesas to 46 is that in 46, Nami taking out one of their own drastically diminishes their power in the game overall, right? We we now are down to four Nami, three um Siga, and three Wow, we kind of help me out. What is this last tribe that we spent so much time with in 46? Yanu? Yanu, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, that one. Like, the one uh, we've been talking about all season. Uh, ooh, I'm so, in a little like pastel 46 colors yeah, here. <laughs> um, and then we have in Marquesas, getting rid of Gabe here didn't really change the balance of power. No, because it was the four of John Carroll, my girl Tammy, Zoe, and uh, the general, like they were the four with Gabe mm-hmm. just hanging out. So it still made it four lockstep versus three. So there really wasn't any question now on who could go home. And the swap in Marquesas was really weird because the swap I in Marquesas was the <laughs> uneven swap where they kept the numbers the same on the tribes that were named that mm-hmm. and just shuffled people around. But what we saw was um, the one tribe. McKenna, you have to help me out here. What was the, that tribe again? Maramu or Rotu? Rotu. The one with, <laughs> the one with more power. Yes, um, Rotu got the majority on both of these uh, swap tribes because of it. Mm-hmm. And, and because of that, they just had so much power in this game. And based on what we had seen previously in Survivor, they can gain that. And they can get rid of Gabe here pretty safely. Honestly, getting rid of Gabe here might have been the demise of the Row 2 4. But that's a whole other topic. Uh, We'll we'll, we'll, we'll put a pin in that topic and pull out the pin for yours. Uh, John, let's talk your outwit moment. I think one of the bigger moments here is we're going to go to the Millennials versus Gen X uh, swap because that's one of the most interesting swaps where the majority votes out one of their own numbers in each of those three uh, Mm post-swap tribal councils. But if we're talking about any of them in comparison to this episode, (laughs) there's only one we can really talk about. It's the one one that we are talking about on the Patreon. Thank you. (laughs) It is absolutely Michaela Bradshaw's booth because there there are more parallels, not just within the fact that Michaela goes uh, because she's being flipped on from her other millennials it's also the fact that she's targeted because she's this seen as this big threat and she really emerges as a big threat Mm -hmm. here in this episode and we and of course we get that from jay's perspective and then we also have a it was you 
wasn't it? In this episode of 46. So we we can't not talk about this, right? Like, yeah. It's it's similar. Obviously, when Soda does it, it's a reference back to when Venus said it after the previous tribal council. Mm-hmm. But we have a moment here, and we we also haven't talked about this tribal council somehow in the last three seasons. Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, no moment. We were waiting for this moment. Exactly. Um, we do go a lot more in depth. We're still going to talk about it, but. We do go a lot more in depth over on the Patreon, so please become a patron. Uh, Our Rewind is at the $10 tier, so become a $10 patron to listen to all this. But, you know, you can also become a $20 patron. There's more content. You can get all the content from the $20 patron. Um, But, yes, this Michaela boot is just one of the most iconic survivor boots when you Mm -hmm. you think of tribal councils like Michaela lives eats sleeps breathes tribal council gold so just the fact of her getting blindsided here when like basically preaching her loyalty through seashell Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and then get turn turns around and gets blindsided seemingly out of nowhere because we have no content of Jay and Will talking to Brett and Sunday. It, mm-hmm. it, it's just like, this is just a beautiful moment. I think th- just the episode in general is good. And I can't wait till I get to my rewatch of millennials versus Gen X. I still got a little bit of ways to go, but um, it's, it just reminds me why millennials versus Gen X is a good season. And it was also mm-hmm. my first season live. Yeah. So like it brought back all the feels. I, I think one of the big things here it, it, that's really interesting when we compare this Michaela boot to the soda boot is Michaela is really focused because she emerges as a strategic threat as she's outlining everything with the rocks and the seashells. Mm-hmm. And she's also very clearly a physical threat. And, and right. Jay mentions both of those when he says... And Michaela Michaela mentions it Michaela. herself, too. Yeah, I mean, Michaela is just a winner, uh, <laughs> as she states in that episode. But when we look at soda... The threat that Soda poses is the other point of the triangle, right? The social aspect where mm-hmm. Tevin's scared because of how well Soda connects with people. Mm-hmm. And even though we are shown, you know, Soda being not so tolerant of Venus because she's she's bugging her and everything. One thing I've noticed in these last couple of episodes, Soda and Venus are still talking quite a bit. No, they don't seem to be You're on talking the about not talking. Yeah. <laughs> But, like, it's not, it doesn't feel like she's ever completely closing Venus off. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, we had that there that conversation early on when Soda's like, oh, I can't talk to you today uh, because of yeah. like, everyone's, like, not liking you anymore. But Soda still had enough social game to keep enough conversation where her and Venus can have this talk after Venus accuses mm-hmm. her of voting for her. And and it, it's just really interesting how strong Soda's social game is and how fearful of it Tevin is. Yeah, because... it would have been interesting to see if Michaela, like, had survived and, like, you know, Brett and Sunday joined up with, like, Michaela and Hannah or something, how, if that worked, and Jay tried to flip on Michaela, how Michaela would have dealt with that afterwards. Mm-hmm. Because like Venus confronts Soda about it, but like it seemed semi reasonable where mm-hmm. like Michaela would be off the handle. Yeah. And, and and the interesting and what I really think is fascinating about this is this comparison between Tevin and Jay. Because I think at this point, this was the point in Millennials versus Gen X where everyone was like, okay, maybe Jay like can win this game. Mm-hmm. He's, he's savvy enough. He knows what he's doing. This seems yeah. like a big move. It doesn't seem like a big move for the sake of a big move. It more seems like a preservation move from Jay mm-hmm. and a longevity move where he's really fearful of what Michaela can do further on. Tevin does say in this episode that he wants to make a big move. And, and that is really what it, what's inspiring him to do this here. He also has the advan- the opportunity to take it here. Mm-hmm. Tevin's seems more like a resume building move. Mm-hmm. And that's where the differences are. But in the end, it's both of them being like, I don't know if I can beat this person in the end. And now is my yeah. opportunity 
So I need to take it while I have as few variables playing into it as possible. Yeah, exactly. I I think both these boots are are really good for this episode uh, for Outwit. But let's go on to Outplay now. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going to talk holding out for food for the tribe. So in this immunity challenge, the person who lasted the longest um, would have food for, would win food for their tribe. And we've seen this some other times before. Um, So I'm going to go with my moment in Heroes versus Villains, which is slightly different. It is in the tribal phase. So Candace and Boston Rob are the winners for the Heroes and the Villains in the immunity challenge. They have individual immunity, similar to what we see in 46. And then they go on to do a second portion of the challenge to Mm -hmm. win food for them that they will then eat at tribal council. Yeah, this is kind of the old school way I think we think of these uh, challenges going, where the one tribe wins food and then sits there in tribal council and watches the first tribal council and then gets to do their own tribal council. What was interesting while we were doing our research for this, McKenna, is that Mm -hmm. we, we found out that a lot of these earlier instances in the show didn't have the individual immunity aspect of this. And it was a lot yeah, of just, like, just tribal. Tribe was funny, yeah. yeah. It mm-hmm. was just the tribe. It, w- it was more of a reward challenge than it was. Well, if it did have the individual immunity portion, it didn't have the food. And we were like, God yeah. darn it. Like, it felt more common than I actually thought. So mm-hmm. it has, like, where, you know, this moment, here's versus villains, it's a completely separate challenge rather than just holding out the challenge that you're currently doing. Yeah, and the real interesting thing about this Heroes... I mean, this Heroes versus Villain episode is pretty iconic, right? It's the episode where Tyson goes home after eating the mm-hmm. hot dogs at Tribal Council and everything. Uh, and Rob probably saves himself by winning this individual immunity as well. Yeah. But this food... Like, the food aspect of this is really interesting, especially when you're eating it in front of the other tribe at Tribal Council. Mm-hmm. It's almost like psychological warfare in a sense. Especially when I'm going to shout out another amazing season, Cook Islands, um, when you can steal someone over to like mm-hmm. eat. Yeah, absolutely. But <laughs> when we, but my instance is actually a little different because mine is not for food, mm-hmm. and and this is the first time I'm pretty sure the first time that we have a post merge. Or the, sorry, the second time we have a post-merge um, splitting of the tribe and two separate tribal councils. The first, obviously, being in Fiji. Uh, we've talked about that episode before and uh, how much we don't like the fact the outcome of it. But I want to go to Ghost Island. And this is the challenge where the tribe gets split into two and they have to hold up the ball with that, uh, mm-hmm. that lever and hold it shut. So it's another endurance challenge, similar to 46. And not the same challenge, obviously, but yep. similar concept. And we have Jenna and Michael come out. And, and what they're doing is they are holding on that extra bit after they win in, or sorry, this is the vote out of Jenna and Michael. They don't win. Uh, but this is the one where the person who wins and last the longest on this endurance challenge, Mm -hmm. their group gets to go second. And because it's in the post-merge, that means they get to see who's on the jury. This is the same thing we saw in... Jenna turns around and Jeff is just like, actually, can you go sit on that bench? And that would be so jarring for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not the place you want to be for sure. And (sighs) we don't... Which is kind of... Again... That is kind of what uh, is happening in 46 too, right? The winning tribe gets to go second, but instead of seeing who's voted out first and reacting to it, which is what we saw in 42, and it it drastically could probably change that vote too in 42. Mm -hmm. And instead what we see is, and it's the same thing that happened in 45, where the first tribe votes someone out, that person is not on the jury. Mm-hmm. And then the second tribe gets that jury. So it's it's kind of similar in that sense. Yeah. But 
the advantage of seeing who's voted out is so huge. It can change everything. And I think it gives an opportunity for a live tribal, which I know Survivor really liked in the late 30s. Mm -hmm. And it, we've kind of gone away from them now. We haven't had That's a live. Okay. Sure. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> but if they want one, Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. Throw someone, like, if you do the split, throw that first person voted out on the jury so everyone sees who it oh, is. So and then all of a sudden, everyone so has to decide like, how they're doing it. I don't get to decompress. I have to get thrown into another tribal council. Like, for me as a person voted out in, like, Jenna's spot, terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree. But at the same time, that's a bigger advantage than food. And I understand why there was no food involved with this ghost island example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So we ready to go to Outlast? Yeah, let's Outlast a little bit. All right. Outlast, um, we have a, a fun one. Um, a game during the challenge. Uh, and... This was such a fun moment of doing the alphabet game inside the challenge, but nobody got that you needed to do like, all right, A is for blank, then the next person needed to do A is for blank, B is for blank, and then continue on. They just were like going to name A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, and, and it's just such a like, does that happen? more like more often than we are shown like do they get the bs bantering between between people because it's like not as much as we might have thought but they just might cut it out or fast forward or silence or something like that yeah it's one of those things that maybe now that maybe the fact that we have 90 minutes is the reason we're seeing these i we've definitely seen them before uh mm -hmm. but I don't think we really spend as much time on them as we do here. And now, granted, that could be because Q's reaction to this is so funny. Charlie trolling Q about it, even funnier. Uh, I, I definitely get why this segment is in this episode. It's so much fun. But you have to imagine on these endurance challenges, someone saying something fairly frequently, or at least, like, there's no way some of these longer uh, challenges, like... Uh, what, the endurance challenge that ends Palau that lasts like 12 mm -hmm. hours. There's no way they're just sitting there in silence that entire time. True, true. Well, you know, one challenge that does not have silence, T-Bird, when it rains, it pours in Africa. She is singing tomorrow um, till the cows come home and she is giving her best rendition of Annie. And then they, she even plays a game of rock, paper, scissors versus uh, Clarence to try and see who wins the immunity challenge. Like just this like distraction from mm -hmm. the the challenge could throw you off because if you're standing there with your arm up and then T-Bird just starts going tomorrow and you're like, what? And then you go, there's the water. So um, I just love the hijinks during the challenge. It's really interesting because this isn't the first example that we see of this. Um, there's an instance in Borneo where Rich is singing uh, 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Uh, but it's, Damn, someone beat you to your moment. I know, I know. It's, it's me off. We're going to get there. Uh, but with T-Bird, it's so interesting because, and, and it's really interesting when you think about this approach to an, an endurance challenge at all, because a lot of people, some people prefer that focus, right? That mental focus, that, that mm -hmm. mental fortitude of focusing on whatever they're doing, whatever their thoughts are doing, maybe turning their brain off. When mm -hmm. someone is singing a song like T-Bird is, and, and T-Bird chose a song that was, I don't know if everyone remembers this, and he was really big with the revival of it in 1999 and everything it was quite uh popular so everyone knows tomorrow and yeah, i was 20 so i did not know that fun fact but thank you john uh, there you go well um, making me feel old, that's fine <laughs> but the big thing is because everyone knows the song it can be really distracting it's hard to tune out the world around you Mm -hmm. And when it's something familiar and it's creeping in, that's when you can lose focus. So it's not just a way that T-Bird is passing the time. Mm -hmm. 
it's also a way that she I, I don't know if she had this intent maybe she probably said it somewhere in like one of her like talking with Deavers at some point mm-hmm. but the fact that this could throw someone off it's just it's it's almost conniving and, and sinister in a way <laughs> t-bird sinister no <laughs> well i mean last pro beat me to it i i this what is in fact my moment i am talking about Christian Hubicki in David versus Goliath because his stories, I think, were quite similar. And while it's not as interactive as what we see in 46 with Q trying to get everyone participating, mm-hmm. it feels like it has that same energy because it feels like where where Charlie's trolling Q about it and everything, I feel like the people in David versus Goliath were just like not cool with Christian talking nonstop about Oh, he talks about a Reuben everything. sandwich at one point, doesn't he? Yeah, like he he talks about literally everything and anything. And I think like just he said it before, like I have five hours of Jeff Probst's un- undivided attention. I'm not yeah. going to not use that. And so he just talked and talked. And like, it could be, it's a strategy to get people to drop because it's like, I got to get out of here. Yeah. And it feels like one of those moments where you can really goad a person who's doing it too. Because with Christian, I don't think there is malice intent with it at all. I think Christian's Mm -hmm. literally just trying to focus on anything other than the pain he is feeling in his body at this moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you let your mouth run at a million miles a minute, you can do that. But... Honestly, if I was there, I would just be asking Christian questions so much, just to, again to troll everyone else. I, I'd be Charlie, yeah. but instead of trolling the person who's trying to do things, I'd be trolling everyone else in the challenge. I like if I was on the sit out bench and Christian just kept talking, I'd be asking him like questions to keep going to be like, So, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean. Reuben sandwich? No, no, no. It's all about this sandwich and just like get them going on different things because it would be hilarious to to just like mess with the other castaways because they're like, uh, you know, or something like that. So it would it would be fun to just get Christian and Vicky on a roll talking. And I think what's really fun about these moments, especially in the new era, and I, I think what was really fun about this moment in 46, this is a human moment. Like, yeah, it's it's sillier, it's goofier, but it's also a TV moment. It's one of those moments that sometimes I think we lose in the new era of Survivor because everyone feels really game body, and we don't have those early reality TV personalities as much anymore. Yeah. This feels like a mo- this feels like a moment, and, and I'll, I'll just bring it up because I, I just watched the Challenge All-Stars 4 because it started this week. And there are moments in that where it's very clear these people were on reality TV in a time where you were trying to make yourself seen on reality TV and the Mm. way they react to each other and the way they give confessionals. That's what this moment feels like. This is a Mm -hmm. TV moment where we have a cast doing something that has to be aired because it's so entertaining. Yeah. And it's been so... We've been so lacking in moments like that in Survivor in recent years. It was so nice to see. Yeah, I agree. We have, you know, cute. Just you're right. It has this moment of like we can't not see this Mm -hmm. because it's just making cute. Like just the fact that Q was doing it, I feel like it made it all the more better because he's like, guys, why aren't you getting this? <laughs> like, I don't understand. Just the way he was frustrated with it was just so funny. Yeah, I agree. Well, I think that sums it up for this episode though, McKenna. That does. So John, what is going on in the specialist universe this week? Why we have a lot going on because we always have a lot going on these days. Uh, if you haven't checked out the recap, Phil and Will did a recap on Wednesday. We had Digging Deeper yesterday where Phil and Will talked about uh, human moments and human relationships in, in Survivor and, and how they impact the game. 
McKenna and Phil also recapped uh, this week's episode of The Amazing Race yesterday. So check that out if you haven't already. This Sunday, we have our predictions of power rankings for the upcoming episode eight. And Phil and Will are going to be joined by J.D. Robinson, uh, who we at The Specialists adore, obviously, because he was a specialist and prior to going on the island. We really like those people. Uh, Monday, Phil and I, uh, as the cinema specialist, will be coming at you with uh, two Alex Garland movies. We're going to be talking 28 Days Later and Sunshine, uh, the latter of which is probably one of the most underrated science fiction movies of all time. Tuesday, Phil and Will will be back discussing Deal or No Deal Island. Uh, Wednesday will be the episode eight recap with Phil and Will. And then Thursday, uh, McKenna and Phil are back with the amazing race and, uh, Phil and Blake will be joined by Brandon Donlin, uh, to discuss, uh, something that happened in, uh, the, <laughs> the next week's episode. Of Survivor. And then of course we're back here next Friday. We'll be a little earlier than usual. So, uh, make sure you, uh, like the video and subscribe. So, you know, no, we're going live you know. next Friday. Yes. All right, everyone. Thank you for tuning in and we will talk to you next week or over at the Patreon right now. Goodbye.